Hey, what's going on, listeners? This is Brother Leon, and you are listening to The Brother Leon Show. I know right now we are in our 91 Psalms for 91 days, but today the Lord told me that he wants me to read a letter that I posted on Facebook, and I want to share it with you guys, and I'll probably end up doing a video on Facebook. So you following me on Facebook, I'm going to do this podcast for you guys right now. And then right soon after I get done with this, I'm going right over to Facebook to give them a live and talk about the letter that I wrote. Um, I want you guys to understand and know that what I say is not gospel, meaning basically my convictions are my own. My beliefs and my thoughts are my own. I do not say that they are gospel. I do not say that they are the written word of God, even though at times I do quote the word of God. But my thoughts are my own. And so the one thing that I want you to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that my convictions are my own, my personal thoughts are my own, my personal Theology on certain issues are my own. And so what I don't want people to get mixed up is that I'm, you know, putting forth a viewpoint that's gospel, even though at times I do come from a minister's perspective. And that is good and all. But the one thing I want you guys to realize and know beyond a shadow of a doubt is that even if you disagree with me, you have the right to disagree with me and I won't attack you. I won't attack you because number one, this is just my personal conviction. I'm not going to sit up here and try to tell you something and, and say that it's gospel or say that it's, you know, revelation and stuff like that. And it might be gospel. I might be quoting the scriptures. I might be giving you revelation. But the one thing I want you to know is that it's coming from me. It's not coming from God per se. God can speak through me. But when I'm speaking my personal thoughts and my convictions, it's all me. I'm going to tell you that right now. So I'm not trying to get out here and say that I'm being puffed up with pride or anything like that. Because what I'm going to say and what I'm going to read to you this night is very controversial. God has called me to controversy. And in this time and in this season right now, we are being tested. We are being tested on every level to see who is going to be for community and who is going to be for agenda. Because the one thing I want you guys to realize and know beyond a shadow of a doubt, we have to stand with people who are for our community and not just an agenda. Because agendas change. But people in our community, they are priceless. They're not cannon fodder. They're not meat for the machine. You know, these are people that have lives. These are people that have families. These are people who have memories. And so the one thing I want you guys to realize and know beyond a shadow of a doubt is that from this letter that I'm going to read from you, you're going to see my heart. And my heart is for the people of God. My heart is for the community and not for any political agenda, not any type of religious agenda, because right now, We are actually in a place where people can exploit us big time. It doesn't matter, you know, who it is. It's just the fact that if we don't wise up, we are going to be victims of exploitation. And it's sad that people will actually use desperate times to get forth their own personal agenda and exploit people because of fear and because of desperation. And the one thing that I've told you guys, even in the midst of this Um, series that we're doing is that I want you to be smart. Don't be stupid. Have faith, but don't be stupid. And what I mean by that, and I'm not trying to be offensive, is that there are necessary risks that you have to take. There's necessary risks when you go to the grocery store. There's necessary risks when you go to the doctor. There's necessary risks when you fill up the car, when you get the car maintenance. Anything that you have to do for your family, that is necessary risk. And what I'm trying to convey is that church is not a, is not a risk that you have to take because church can be done another way. I'm not going to sit up here and allow my parishioners and not allow my congregants to be put in any type of risk, 
Because the one thing I want you guys to know beyond a shadow of a doubt is that the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. That is what Jesus said. And that is what I adhere to. I'm not willing to put my flock on the line because of a personal vision or a personal mandate that God gave me. And here's the example. I got used to going down a certain road. And I'm just giving you an example of church and I'm going to explain it like this. You get used to going down a certain particular road. I got used to going down a particular um, stretch of road. But unfortunately, a tree fell out on that road. We didn't know that the tree was going to fall on the road, but the tree has fallen on the road. And so now we can't take that way. We have to go another way. And so because we have to go another way, we may not like it. It may be uncomfortable. The way may be a little bit longer. The road may be a little bit bumpier, but we take that way to get to the destination. And that is what I mean when I say the Bible says that we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. But we as the church, we are not the building. And I'm going to say it again. We are not the church building. We are the church as a group of people. We are the church as a people, as a system. And that system needs to be overhauled at times. I do. I am critical of that system at times. But the one thing I want you to realize is that the church building is not the church. It just has the title church, but it does not have the life of the church. It does not. It does not have what God entailed for his church to have, which is many parts, which is many members. The church is the body of Christ, but it's not the building. It's the people. And so I want you guys to know beyond a shadow of a doubt is that we as ministers have to go another way. We have to go another way because the tree has fallen on the road that we were so familiar with. And now we have to take another way. And God gives us the um, discernment and he gives us the inspiration and the grace and the faith to go another way. Because the one thing I love about God is that the Holy Spirit can act as a GPS and we may be able, not be able to. We may not be able to go one route, but the Holy Spirit has a way to reroute us to get us to our destination. It may take us out the way and that's all good, but we will still make the destination. And that's what life is about. That is what our journey is about in God. So let me read this letter to you. I'm going to pull this bad boy up and I'm going to read it to you. We're going to pray and then I'm going to be done. But I just want to say thank you. Thank you for hearing me out. Thank you for um, listening to the broadcast. I appreciate all of you. I appreciate you sharing it. I appreciate the subscribers to the YouTube page. I appreciate you following me on Facebook and Instagram. I appreciate you all. I appreciate those who have bought the book, Let No Man Put Asunder, who have purchased it from Amazon or even from myself at a book signing. So let me read this letter. And it's titled Religious Freedom Versus Purpose in God. My thoughts. People are willing to die in this season for the sake of religious and economic freedom. However, to my faith community, this is not what God has called you to do. And I wrote that in all caps. We are to live according to our purpose in God. Callings change. Mantles change. Anointings change. But the purpose of God over your life never changes. You may ask. What is, the, what is my purpose in God? Is it not to be a manifested son or daughter of God, which will require you to live? Do and finish what you are called to do. Christ died for us, and the only dying you need to do is to the beastly nature and anything that will make you think that you could be anything other than a son or daughter of God. Your life doesn't have to be sacrificed for a church building. You don't own and can't take it with you. Jesus died once and for all. We don't need another Isaac and your pastor isn't Abraham, nor is the American dream. We wake up and real. Hold up. Let me say that again. Wake up and realize that the life you are willing to give up for recklessness disguised as religious freedom and religious persecution and economic freedom are nothing more than you wasting it for men who will not be honest and look at you as cannon fodder and expendable. 
The true shepherds will not put you at risk and all systems in the earth change. But God gives us grace and wisdoms to adjust in the times that we are in. Don't give in to the lies. Church people are catching this virus now over recklessness and unnecessary risk when adjustments could have been made to keep the most vulnerable safe. God will judge those who purposely, purpose, purposefully use their platform and influence to cause people to risk their lives and die because of it. People trust you and you betrayed them by not protecting them. And all this is your fear and your lack of trust. When they start taking 501c3s and holding churches liable for COVID-19 deaths, then you'll want to claim your church as a corporation to take the heat off you personally. People wake up. T.D. Jakes wasn't wrong. If we are prophets, listen and look at the life of Daniel. He was skilled and versed in matters of science, and he served the king. Why do we choose not to listen to the prophetic voice that speaks in scientific language that you can understand to keep your people safe? And I put a hashtag at the end of it. Yeah, I'm cool with losing relationships over this post. And so this is my heart. My thing is right now is that I am so tired of us going back and forth about what is faith and what is fear. If you have faith enough to open your doors and put your people at risk, then you take the consequences that come with that risk. Because the one thing I'm going to say to you right now is this, is that you can lie to yourself. You can lie to God. You can lie to the people of God, but you cannot lie to consequence. And the one thing that we got to realize is that God is going to bring us into judgment over what we have done with the resources that he has given us, with the resources of our time, with the resources of the people of God, with the resources of the gifts of God that were placed in our care. And so we got to begin to have steward, have a heart of a steward to have more steward lifestyle instead of a wasteful lifestyle. Because I'm going to tell you right now, there's a difference between the faithful steward and there's a difference between the unfaithful steward. Because the faithful steward, he added to the unfaithful steward or the fearful steward. He was the one that got scared and buried it. And a lot of people right now, they are taking burying the gifts that God has given them and they burying it in fear. And because of fear, they bury it. They bury the talent. And now they got to begin to manipulate and make the work and make the vision of God come to pass. And they do it by beating you. Come on, get out here. Y'all need to come out here and support the work of God. God has called us. But I'm going to tell you, man, look, everybody ain't got Smith Wigglesworth faith. Everybody does not have Kenneth Hagin faith. Everybody ain't John G. Lake. And and I'm going to sit up here and say that everybody doesn't even have Brother Leon faith. And I'm believing God that God keeps me covered when I go out here in these streets because I'm deemed essential. I can't work remotely. I got to be out here. And I still go to the grocery store. I still do those things that are needful. I gas up the car, whatever my wife needs, whatever my kids need. I'm there because, number one, I just believe God. And I'm not going to sit up here and put myself at risk, put my family at risk and put other people at risk because of the title that I hold. Now, granted, God has called me to go into all the world. But the one thing about the world is that the world is under judgment right now. But the purpose of God over my life does not quit. I still go on, but I just move in a different way. I'm not going to stop, but I'm not going to put nobody else at risk. This is the call that is upon my life. This is the covenant that I've made with the Lord. And those who have made covenant with me, you know, they're going to take up the burden too. But even in the midst of it, I'm still not going to put them at risk because the disciples, they were with Jesus. But when they came to get him, they tried to take them. And, he, and, and when they tried to get him, they fell backwards. Because he wanted the scriptures to be fulfilled. No, you're going to take me. You're not taking them. And so this is what I mean. I'm willing to put my life on the line for the sheep. But I'm not willing to risk them at all for the sake of helping my personal vision or what God has called me to do come to pass. Because there is and there will always be another way to do church. 
We can assemble online. We can assemble by Zoom. We can assemble by every means that is out here technologically. But I want you guys to know beyond a shadow of a doubt what this thing is showing us is that God wants to begin to minister to his people. Yes, I'm going to preach the word. Yes, I'm going to pray. But when it comes to impartation, but when it comes to laying hands, God is going to meet his people where they are. And it has to be by your faith. I can sit up here and tell you all day long, touch the computer screen, but it's going to be your faith that makes you whole. It's going to be your faith that causes deliverance and restoration to come to you. And even though I like the way that we did it, when it was personal, when it was, you know, hands on, we can't do that right now. Not saying we ain't going to go back to that before right now is just not possible. And I don't want to take that risk. I don't want to take that risk. Number one, because I can't sit up here with a clear conscience and tell the most vulnerable people in my church to come out because God gave me a mandate. And then next thing you know, somebody comes out, they end up getting sick. They end up dying. I don't go to the hospital. I'm not going to sit up here and be honest and tell you I'm afraid and tell you I messed up because that's what some of these pastors, they will not admit that they messed up. They're not going to admit that they are afraid because for them to do it, you will begin to question their leadership. Seriously, that's just part of the job. So my thing is, is that as a good shepherd, I'm not going to put that type of burden on myself, nor you, because God forbid something happens. You will forever hate me. You will blame God, leave the church, and some of you might even go as far as to sue me. And then me, I want to protect my assets and protect my life savings, so I'll put the church up as a corporation. You can sue the corporation, but you can't sue me personally. And yeah, you might be mad at me and, and, and everything like that, but here is it. Here it is, a soul that I could have won, that I could have, a life that didn't have to die, and souls that I could have won. If I would have just did what was right. And that is what I mean. We got to begin to do what's right. And I know a lot of people may not like what I'm saying. And I know a lot of people may not even like my post. I'm good with it. But we got to begin to to make church make sense. It doesn't make sense when you give analogies of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Because that is totally different from this situation right here. They were called to worship a, a God. This is not that. We are called to refrain from public gatherings. They're not saying don't worship. They're saying, can you do it another way so that we can stop the spread of this virus? The whole analogy of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was basically about they were not willing to, to bow or worship another God. This is not the case. We are not bowing to COVID-19. But in the same token, the Bible does say, fear God and honor the king. And I'm just paraphrasing. That's from, from, from 1 Peter 2.17, if I'm not mistaken. But the thing is, is that you can't sit up here and cherry pick. And a lot of people cherry pick what they want to believe. But the one thing I will say is that all scripture, all scripture is for edification. All scripture is for, for knowledge that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And a good work is that you keep your family safe. I can't sit up here and say that you're out of faith and that you're in fear if you're in a place of protecting your family and going out here and doing for them. I can't sit up here and judge you on that. I'm not going to do it. And it's unfair that some people will do this to you. So I'm going to tell you, the Bible says that there is therefore no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. So that's my time right there. You guys be blessed. Father, Lord God, I thank you, Lord, that you have blessed us. I thank you, Father, Lord God, that moreover you have called us to be witnesses unto you. And so, Father, I thank you for the Brother Leon listeners that this is a time of grace, that this is a time of truth. But this is also a time of sobering up. And this is something that we have to do. We have to sober up and not allow the intoxication, the intoxication of drive, the intoxication of lust, the intoxication of idolatry to, to, to get us to a place where the devil just throws, off, throws us off track. We can't allow it. And so, Father, 
I thank you for the listeners. And I just pray right now that their discernment will begin to be at the highest at their peak so that they will know. Give them eyes to see and a heart that discerns good from evil, evil from good. And let them know that there is a way that the vultures eye hath not seen, nor the lion's wealth hath trodden upon. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Brother Leon, listeners, you be blessed, and I love you, and I thank you. Have a blessed one.